All right. So so something that that I've been thinking about, Ken, which which is um, if we if we rely on. So let me go back to the architecture of this uh, Levant okay. um, design. OK, so technically what I want to do is basically produce if this is your component, it could be a SpinNet core, it could be anything. So it could be, you know, your your component under test, right? Mm -hmm. And we are putting Levent here, and we're basically saying, I want to expose an API endpoint from that side to pretend that there is a so so this basically kind of exposes. An API, just like I showed you in the last uh, session, right? And this API will will basically either this is this is the cloud foreign approach. Like you're either actually going truly to the cloud, or you are basically pushing through a local API that pretends an event has happened, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. The thing that I'm thinking about in here is is there a way? To, so is this cloud? Okay. Is there a way that I can communicate with with a thing in here through my acceptance test that doesn't have to be an API that I'm trying to stand up? Like I need to communicate to a thing to pretend that a message came through the queue. Yeah. Yeah. The let's let's do together this experimentation right to just show you the problem that i have if only if this only happens if this is an asp.net core a, api if this is an asp.net core api like this yeah this problem certainly happens right okay. I, I i don't know i don't know if you experimented with something in there but uh, let's let's open up a quick um um, a quick Visual Studio instance here, and let's do this together. All right, and, and I think uh, what was the what was the landing of? I think the last conversation I had to, to kind of exit, but I think it was mentioned that um, you know from the back end mocking the uh, your, your brokers in a certain way, um, being able to leverage that and through eventing and that sort of stuff. So having a surprise sort of eventing happen in the background. Um, was that something, but, but I know you mentioned that you wanted to have it be an actual API. Yep. If, um, if you, if you mock your brokers, then it's not acceptance test anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So it has to be listening at a, the endpoint that is trying to reach out to has to kind of mimic that really, basically. It has, yep. It has to really reach out to its own resource, which in this case, it would be a queue. And if it's an external resource, it needs to program around it. Mm. It needs to basically program around it. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, so, so let's see here. Uh, I want to do this. I want to go and say. Uh, one last thing, though, real quick. Um, what that I think I was uh, missing from last time was like, what? Are, how are we going to uh, trigger this? Is it going? We're going to give them an external sort of framework that they can say, hey, send this data now. And then yeah. I expect my app to respond this way. Yeah, right? you're like you on a remote in a way. Okay. I, I I would so a cleaner way would be, you know, instead of telling the acceptance says post against this endpoint, mm -hmm. right? We will have a broker in the acceptance test that mm -hmm. is also using Levent and it's basically saying in queue message. Go ahead and in queue message. So even though we're saying in queue, it's actually yeah. sending a request you know gotcha. over to so see what i'm saying uh, so, so they both have the event and so yeah. you're able to actually now kick off an event to the event which should talk to the other event yeah <laughs> exactly gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> nice, nice. And, that, and now that you're saying that i'm just wondering yeah i think standing up a restful like a restful uh api to give access to this, because that's exactly the same thing we're going to do with a lot of things. Like if you're trying to use SendGrid or any email provider, 
Mm -hmm. I want to test this end to end. I want to know that my system is sending the right thing. So we need an equivalent of Levent for emails. That's Danielle Scott. She's supposed to be helping me with that one. There will be a whole bunch of these, you know, that basically are, this is what cloud foreign means. It means that Mm -hmm. your system doesn't care whether it's running in the cloud or running locally. It's still giving you the exact same result. Yeah. It would be an interesting game though, because, um, it will be an interesting game because the what if the cloud changed its API? So if if your cloud kind of bailed on you and deprecated, yeah, what happens yeah. then? But you know, I'd yeah. I'd like to take my problems one at a time. You know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, when when we're talking about this, I'm thinking of it like I know we're gonna have um, some pre-built types. Like if we're getting a message from SMS that we subscribe to like a topic. Uh, from on the or like like SNS on the Amazon side or um, you know Azure Functions receiving something from the event grid and that has a special body created. Um, I know we can have some pre-built things, but allowing them to change and have a custom yeah. sort of expectation and contract, I think that might be something that to be leveraged. Like you mentioned, if they're you're moving to a different cloud provider, yeah, and they're it's sending it's messages it's in yeah. a certain way, you yep. should be able to change your custom yep. expectance message. Yep. Yep. Um, to map to that. And then you can kind of test how your application will respond to the changeover. But that, that's really the goal, Ken, is, is, is that if I switch from service bus to SNS or SQS, right, and mm-hmm. Amazon or switch over to MQ Rabbit or whatever else is out there, uh, yeah. it, your system internally shouldn't change. It shouldn't change. So I'm building abstraction even at the outer the outer skirt of the uh, of the system itself. And I'm basically saying, here's a library that abstracts away the cloud for you. So it doesn't matter what you're dealing with or what you're working with. But then on top of that, this library will tell you, hey, you can simulate the cloud on your local machine. Right. Okay. That's what cloud foreign means. Airplane mode, right? You're not, you don't have <laughs> right, an internet yeah. connection. You're just, okay. So, so let's do this. So here is a, I'm just creating a simple uh, ASP, ASP.NET. Have you seen the folks that say ASP.NET? I have not, but that's yeah. an interesting uh, way to say that. ASP. <laughs> ASP.NET. Okay. <laughs> Local events. And uh, let's say a uh, demo. Getting this real quick. I'll show you later. I'm working on the biggest piece of business logic I've ever seen. A massive orchestration service. Oh, wow. But uh, I'll show it to you at some point. Okay, so there's just a basic, basic controller, right? The idea here is to basically go and say, I want to have uh, Lake U spin up a... A, a, a server with that server. So you have this program CS, everything mm-hmm. is running in here, great, right? I want to be able to spin up a server within that server to expose an endpoint from the other side. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's basically the same scenario that, that we just talked about around the this, this area here, right? Okay, okay. So let's see that. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to create just a simple broker. Under the broker, I'm going to create a broker, something called events, just for experimentation purposes. And I'm going to go here and say, I event broker is my event broker. Okay. So how do these work? If I go into the constructor of get of this guy, I can go here and say I want to instantiate a web application factory or something like that. Let me see okay. what I did with factory. Yeah. So let's see. Let's see. Can I? I'm just. But you have to have a separate startup. Um, and so that, I think that we kind of talked about this last time where you can have a startup and where you can kind of inject certain services during that startup time. Um, and so maybe we 
that's the flexibility of things of like allowing us to like what we should be expecting um no 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 uh so it's just a web application now we have you know how the minimal apis work that's the yeah. this is the minimal api so oh, i'm thinking web application factory we're like oh, you yeah, take yeah, a yeah. startup program yeah. and then never mind gotcha actually that might be the solution kin we might just end up doing that what you just said okay. so this is builder equal i'm just showing you the the problem that we have so this is create builder and then this dot web application equal right. web application dot create so now that i have this i can now stand an endpoint mm -hmm. right so yep. i can go here and say that intelligence man is crazy yeah this yeah this <laughs> thing is this thing is creepy <laughs> that is crazy right there creepy. <laughs> I don't know why, like, I don't know what to do in here. It's, uh, it's, I think actually it's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, it is. It is. That's why I'm, that's why I'm like, what? <laughs> like, by the way, are, don't write code now, anymore, man. Just hit tab. <laughs> they have not, they have now alt period, which gives you different suggestions. See? Oh, what? Oh, wow. Like, if you don't like this one, we will find some others for you. Oh, nice. Wow. <laughs> This is why I like hanging out with you, man. This is uh, <laughs> coming with gyms every time. Now I'm like, I want to go to a solution and just start trying that. Like, just <laughs> all period. Got it. I'm all period. It'll that. give you. It'll give you the options. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! I can anyway, select my intelligence now. Oh, it's great. It's great. <sighs> Love so, it. so, so okay. So here's a couple of functions that I actually had. Here it is, and basically this is going to go and say. You can create an endpoint and then you can expose that endpoint and you can basically run the server. This here, my my doubt, and I think what's happening actually, Ken, is yeah. that this is blocking the server. Like this is actually this is a singleton. I remember the issue now. You said you it was kicking out your local host instance yep. that you were actually trying to run and yep. it's taking precedence over that. Yeah. Got it. Got it. See, so so mm -hmm let's let's try it let's go and say okay so i'm i'm i'm, I'm pushing up a, a thing i'm not even going to simplify this i'm going to go and say this here this endpoint here is just nothing but just students slash api slash students okay like this and this guy isn't doing much other than just going and saying here i don't even need your request body or anything i'm going to make it even a git call so yeah. Even easier. Yep. Really simple. Really, really simple. And this says, says um, hello, Mario. Right? So that's that. Yep. And I don't need the type. I don't need any of that. Right? So that creates an endpoint. Yeah. And I'm going to make this. So let's first start and run this application as is. Just as is. Okay, so without 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 the craziness, this mm -hmm. is what I get back, right? So without actually starting anything, this here is what I get back. Yeah. yeah. So far so good, right? Mm -hmm. No problem there. It works. Hit the endpoint. No problem, right? Yeah. Now let's go back to ASP.NET Core in here. And let's do this on the program CS. Let me take that in, these two here and make them part of my registration process in here. In the interface, yep. Yeah. Let me do this part as well. So I finally found a reason to use minimal APIs. <laughs> I just. <laughs> It's just not playing well with me. That's the thing. It's great for me whenever I'm doing samples. Yeah. I don't want to go bake out all the, because there's that temptation, right? When you're going yeah. like creating a sample app, the API yeah. doesn't matter because you're working on the front end, but you don't want to leave your API looking all, you know, so you might do the full like interfaces and all that, whatever. But minimal API is like, hey, throw it in one file and I have everything I need for like my to do app. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? Like, yeah. So like I'll have like, I'm going to do code base. I'll have like a sample. And the sample will use like the minimal API, um, right? And that way, the front end, the focus is there on like the Blazor app part, right? That nobody's yep. worried about the API. Yep, yep. 
it comes in handy with some of these kind of quick. So see, I'm trying to take it to production. I'm trying to find a usage for it, right? Um, so this here needs to inherit, of course, I yeah. event broker. Okay, so we have this. This guy should be happy now. Come on. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other thing that we want to do is that on the app side in here, I need to go and say app dot get services. I think services dot get service. I event broker. So this is it going and saying find whatever is implemented for this. Mm -hmm. And then uh, let's see here. Uh, so this is now I event service. Right, so this is this guy. Yeah. That's I event broker, that's right. Now I wanna go and say, and what is this? What is this guy tripping about? Okay. Converting null literal, but oh my god! I like putting oh annotations on a project, man. Oh my god! You know, stable. Yeah, that's good too. No, <laughs> absolute nonsense. Okay, be happy now. Here, come on, disappear. You can do it. You can do it. Come on, come on. Okay, so event broker here. Dot. And I want to go and say create publish endpoint, mm -hmm. and then event broker. I want to run API, and I'm going to go and say HTTP local host 1985. So this should spin another server within the server. Mm -hmm. Watch the crazy. <laughs> Look at this web application factory now dripping. Oh, oh because, okay. because I disabled the usings, right? So this is okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think some others <laughs> will as well. So that's okay. I'm being punished for trying to kind of. <laughs> I, whoever came up you with that. Just global usings, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, oh, it's going to air out in a couple of other places, of course, because, oh, if you use system in one file, you should be able to use it anywhere no i don't want to do that i want to copy my file and put it in a jest and people know exactly everything they need to pull in the dependencies for it so let's see that that is the one annoying thing about it like when i'm looking at certain resources i have to go pull up microsoft docs and go see where that came, what assembly that came from what were were it came from. mistakes were made i'm telling you yeah. mistakes were made but it's cool with like, you know, X unit. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like yeah. you can do global using an X unit, it's like I don't have to put that in every single test, but nah. <laughs> right. Yeah, so, right so, so look, look, it stood up the server, but the second server took over. Look at this. Like mm -hmm. it will never pop up the screen. And look, the 1985 server took over. Oh man. So now I can't do it. So it swapped out. Yeah. Hmm. What can we do about this, Ken? This is the this is the real this is the real problem. So you can definitely do a web application factory. I know Let's try the word. web application factory. Yeah, because I've done that several times. But the problem is you'll need a program file to leverage, right? Um, because I haven't tried standing it up on its own. Like I don't know if that would just create a default. Maybe maybe it can create a default, but I know it, it expects a generic type of your program to spin up. Web application factory, right? Yeah, you have to install VC so yeah, testing. Yep, that's it. Let's do it. Let's do it, my friend. We can probably do this. Yeah, I think it expects a type. Uh, okay. So I can do that too. I can go here and say, hey, you want a program CS? <laughs> no, no program. <laughs> I'll give you a program CS. No problem. Here it is. Current one. <laughs> here it is. Uh, I need to make it uh, somewhat uh, minimal, though, because the. I don't want to stand up. I don't want another um, another screen to pop up for the. Yeah, so I don't need any of this. I don't need swagger. Mm -hmm. I don't need. Really, for the most part, just very minimal. Like this. That's swagger gen. No, 
uh, add endpoints API Explorer. Really don't care. So I think that, well, if that's the case, then I can go here and say, hey, whatever this is, go ahead and stand up the um, the builder dot, I think, map git directly or uh, web host, is it? What yeah, was uh, it? Was a thing? Was it an app? Was it the app? Let's see. If I think it was app. Yeah, app. App dot map git. Yeah, there yep. you go. There yep. you go. So API yeah, students, yeah. and then how did how did it uh, how did it uh, get the? Uh, so this is here configured application URL, right? How did it get that here? There got to be a way here where it goes and says. Oh, uh, because it's looking at the low, uh, the launch settings and all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see here. Oh, oh, I forgot. Hold on. So this guy takes a URL, actually. Yeah, yeah. Here. HTTP oh, yeah. localhost 1985. There we go. Yep. yep. So we I'm actually just scrolling on the dock and saw that. The, you, you're doing it? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Nice. And, nice. And you're, you're the man. Ken is the man, the myth, the legend. You're, 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 you're faster than I am, though. I did a Google search and I'm running through the Microsoft Learn doc. And I'm like, ah, that's the syntax. This um, is this is old school programming. You know, just, there's no documentation. Go figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, if that's my web application, then what do I need to do? I need to go and say, um, I think I do like, create a client. On whenever you actually run the, the endpoint, right? Let's say create client. And that's going to allow you to call the endpoints itself. So oh. you'll have to kind of route it. Oh, that's the weird thing. You know, because something actually has to, like you have to call this a, a method that's calling an endpoint, right? Oh. So uh, like if like if you were to have just okay, um, call endpoint right, and then okay. then you call your client and you call that API students endpoint, you could do that, right? So so so, yeah. so wait 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 what what did we do before to make this work? Hold on, I think hold on, brother. So there's an R acceptance test, right? Yeah. Um, let's see here. One yeah, I'm doing this quite a bit actually. So. Okay. Um, let me pull up a code snippet. So if we go to O triple S, and we get the acceptance, and then through the API. So this is how we set it up. Again, the the uh, uh, let's see, this calendars O triple S. There should be one in here. So this is APIs, and there should be brokers in here. API test collection. So we use the API test collection, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. In that collection, you have the probably the the overall broker that. Yep. Yeah, we have, there you go. Yep. So create client, and then we pass in. So this HTTP client is what we pass RESTful API factory. Yeah. So that HTTP client was what I was saying. You'll have to hook it up to where, when you make a request, to you want to request to that web app you have to actually probably pass the route and then that client will actually call the internal application oh, so that's good. that's it's the part actually, that it's this. not actually exposing it it's not actually running yeah yeah that's the thing it's not actually running i mean it's technically running but you can't access it from like an outside source oh. you have to actually go through that client to access it so that's that's the part that's the part mm. that's the tricky part mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Mm. Let me let me try this. So I'm gonna take this out. Mm -hmm. I'm even gonna take the implementation here out. And then I'm gonna go and say, hey, here's your program, CS. I, I'm just instantiating this. So if I run this today, what happens? I get an error. What's the error says? Program has more than one entry point. It's yeah, not gonna let you. <laughs> it's not gonna let you because that's how it mm. <laughs> yeah so i mean what you could do well hmm. you have to access it from a 
Oh man, let's see. They're gonna be they're gonna be just a way that we can just spin another API from an API. Why is that a problem? You know, that's the thing. That's the that's the interesting part, you know. There gotta be a a way where you can go and say Yeah, so the thing is, you're, you plan on running this during acceptance tests, right? So it's going to be more like integration and acceptance tests. So really, it's going to be more along the lines of you'll be running this through like a CI/CD process. Yes. And it you'll has be to be solid. Yeah. Yeah. So you'll, you'll be spinning up your app or, or call their, some people call their actual live test API. Yeah. Do some things. But at the same time, you could probably, you, oh man, yeah, that's bundled because you have to do web application factory for your own API, which will then call another web application factory. <sighs> yeah, we we have to, we have to find a way to stand up a. Here's the thing. I mean, here's the thing. Um, <laughs> Can we use Docker? No. <laughs> I mean, I mean, technically, this kind of kind of you know treading towards dockerization but still the idea needs to happen like the idea itself yeah so it also brings another kind of uh, engineering idea which is can i subscribe to an endpoint externally can i subscribe to an endpoint externally because if that if we can figure this one out that's everything. So let me just kind of explain. Okay. okay. So here's, here's a little bit more crazy from my side, you know, <laughs> of the world. So okay. this could actually solve the problem too by going and saying, imagine this problem. You have an API. Mm -hmm. This is actually a problem I'm actively trying to solve for my okay. own work. So, okay. so assume that you have a database in here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what's happening, assume that you have a program setting up in here, an external program. Okay. This program sends a post that says, I want to subscribe the events that are coming from to API students. So whatever API students, whatever endpoint is exposed in here, Mm -hmm. I want to subscribe to that event. Okay. What that means is that when this happens, this guy needs to figure out a way to hit that guy back. Yeah. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. However, okay. First of all, what do we save here as a reference for this guy? Because you're going to have to save something, right? Do you save an endpoint? So, it, it, I mean, is there, this is the whole thing about if you want to be dynamic, that'd be a tougher. But if you had like an onboarding, like you could technically store um, the the client and propose request body or whatever else. Right. Or sorry, response body or something. Um, so that way it could when it receives a ping at the API, you could send one back to what they subscribe to. But again, when they subscribe you're going to have to, they're going to have to send that information of like what is the webhook that you need to send information to basically so that's so that could be something you store of like okay what do i what's the webhook like what do i what do i interact with um, let, let me ask you this i yeah. i use webhooks i know about webhooks but i don't know how what they're made out of what is a oh, so I, I was thinking even just something more um more more custom to where it's it's their own endpoint that they want to receive from because they're, they're testing that they when they get a, an event from an external source right so that webhook could is going to be uh from the client per se yeah they need right? to give them their yeah. so i said webhook that's probably a little more generic than what like it's probably a little more misleading but the return endpoint that the event needs to be needs to be passed to that is what you're going to register so everybody should have their own um implementation of that so let's say the program is testing for hey i want to get a an event every time a new student registers in this external application because we need to sync up our data with them or whatever else right and so we read they register with this api and so they're saying hey 
when we request from you um, by this ID or something, send it back to our URL at, you know, or whatever the eventing URL is, send us back a message here. And this is what, this is what message we want you to send. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. And so you store that information. So when they call it, you know exactly what endpoint and what kind of um, framework or body you're looking to send back. Um, that gets a little tricky just because there's a little there's an initial step right like they'd have to call a couple endpoints of the api they have to say have to get hey, register, register this endpoint yeah now hey send me an event you know, <laughs> you know what yep. I mean? yep. so that's kind of it's kind of two requests that they have to send out before they could actually get a response back see, see that goes back to the same thing if i was able to watch this skin mm-hmm. if i was able to go and say hey i can spin up levent in here mm-hmm. And Levent itself exposes an endpoint that can allow you to subscribe a function at the broker level. Mm-hmm. When you go register, it will it will leave the API endpoint that Levent creates for you. Okay. When the event happens here, it will go kick off that endpoint. Gotcha. Well, the thing is, it's almost if you if you, since you have Levent in the middle, um, so let's say that we send the API request out and it comes back to the event, right? Mm-hmm. The only problem with that, we're not going to say problem, but the thing that could really take a middle step away from it is that what if the event is a thing that's actually just sending the information back? So, I mean, I guess if you want to store it like in a long term, yeah, and not have to spin up and register each time. Yeah. Um, you know, because I, I would even say um, if you had a preloaded, um json of hey here's my endpoints here's my response that i want to get and whatever else right we load if you load that up when the event spins up with the app yep really i mean if you're in um mock mode you can literally just have the event return that information back to you based on the configuration settings you have for it right Right. it's not really you don't really need to actually store it in the api and whatever else and um, no, no that, that I understand. This is more of a production situation, right? Yeah. Let's just go back to this here, right? Okay. This here. I want to be able to. So, so this solution here, you know, it's, bro- al- it's almost like we're wanting to create a mock server. Like, I think I think that's kind of what the key is. It's like. I'm looking at it from Levent sitting in the middle and doing this orchestrating back and forth. But really, it's like you almost want to just mock the external resource. Like, so that's the focus of it. And so that's what we're getting at here. So it's like, how can you? It is. It is. Yeah. It's, so it's, like, it's really I, mocking on, on an external level. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I get it. I just keep defaulting back to the fact that you can kind of simulate that. But then again, that's like you to your point now you're still controlling a little bit and it's not an environmental thing um with with true latency and true connectivity and all that stuff yeah that's a okay i I gotta keep dialing back i think (laughs) i I think you just came up with the solution i did did. you just came back with a solution right now you want to see okay yeah yeah let's go (laughs) it is like you literally just made a solution here you said mock and you said, so oh, let me maintain my, check this out, my dear friend. So okay. this, this, this gentleman from Europe, his name is Stefan. He created something called wire mock. Hmm. Okay. And wire mock, what it does, we use it in our acceptance tests to pretend that there is an external API running. Okay. Are you with okay. me? So, yeah. Yeah. so where is his wire mock right here? Six million. That's stiff. Uh, I, I actually, I actually got in a call with him, and he's actually a very sweet guy. He's he's very smart, and I was trying to solve this exact problem, but you know, um, uh, we didn't really get a chance to kind of, you know, have everything that we wanted, and you know, kind of it kind of died out. But here we are. We're back to it again. Watch this. I can go here and say our wire mock server. There's your server. 
right? And this server here, he made it like this. Wire mock okay. server dot start. That's a server. And you basically go and say, I am standing up a tiny server in here. Okay. And I, I, I love talking to you because you'll throw some words <laughs> and that will be exactly what I'm trying to do. HTTP local host 1985. I did not know this existed. The wire mock. I said, oh, bro, it does. It does. Nice. The, guy, the guy who made it is he's, he's with me on Twitter. We talk on Twitter yeah. a lot, a lot, a lot. Nice. Okay. Nice. And then I can go and say, take this wire mock server. Mm -hmm. And basically say create wait where is my acceptance test well, give me a sec I even I even use it at work it's it's very very this is a uh, open source as well right yeah 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 it's open source. Around in there man see what uh see what he's see what he's doing <laughs> yeah <laughs> I love just perusing code all the time man just seeing like oh yeah 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 So uh, on a gatekeeper side. Oh, he did this in Java. Uh -oh. No, 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 not this That's one. A there's, okay. there's a dot net implementation of it. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yes, sir. Lab commands, lab tests. Yeah, wire server start, and he put in an in. Oh, it goes to localhost automatically. Port. Yeah. My man, my man. Okay, and then. We basically went and said, let's go. And I talked about this in a, in another video called End to End Part 2. Yeah, there it is. So this is how you set up. You, you literally say. Oh, nice. Man, right? Now, here's the oh, deal. Oh, man, I, that's I, awesome. Okay. <laughs> he pretty much just like mock, you know, MOQ mock, right? Like he, you could pretty much mock. By, by the way, the same way. By, oh. by the way, look, the thing oh, is started, awesome. it started to set it up for me. <laughs> Do you I have, have to write code anymore, here. man? Just just type something and hit tab. <laughs> I have absolutely no words here. Now the <laughs> question crazy. the question here is, and this could be like a day oh, worth man. of work or like a month worth of work. Uh, what is what is um so he says given, yeah. right? So let me let me let me put this in here. Here. So this is my wire mock server. Mm -hmm. So that's crazy. Can that's I crazy. actually, yeah, can I, I can set up the path that I want. So API slash students, mm -hmm. right? See, given responds with and all that. This is great. So can I act using post? Great. Don't care about the body at the moment. Well, maybe we, need, we care about the body. But the thing is, this is not letting me. Well, we could expose this as a parameter. Yeah, yeah. So you could actually go and say, I don't care about the body, but respond with this is here is the part that I care about. I want to go and I want to go and say, I want to send a function inside this guy. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Because, the because the function is what's going to actually be, be registered, registered in this. Right. So um, I don't know if it has with function or with, let's see, with. With not found with body with body from file with callback, my man. Oh, oh nice. Okay. <laughs> He's getting better. <laughs> He's getting better. Or, or with header, better. does he have with handler? That would be nice. With transformer. Uh, okay, let's go. Let's do with callback. Okay, so callback here expects a funk, right? Mm -hmm. Here is a funk. Yeah. Anonymous, thanks to the C, the power of C sharp, and this funk is expecting that it will have a response message. I'm just going to say response in here, right? And I'm going to go here and say return response. Actually, don't care. What's the type of this guy? Response message. That's right. Request. That's request message. And then wait. And... It, oh, this is a request message, right? Yeah. yeah. Let's just give him a response message in here, which I don't care about actually. So this is new response message. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Now I can register whatever function I want in here, right? Yeah. So that basically means, like for now, 
just for the time being, just to kind of go and say, here's what we have. So here's yeah, so, so your input, so you'll have a function or I'm sorry, a method that will take in that function that is going to take in a request and give out a response. Yeah. So the, the caller can just call that and then it will just keep adding to that mock server basically. So, and that's back to that preloaded script I talked about, not script, but JSON of yeah. configuration, where when you start up the program, the event can actually run through that and start registering all those endpoints. Yeah. Um, Let's do this. So if I go into my original interface with Lake U and I go and say, here is Lake U and here is the, here's the interface that I want. So right now, I don't need that server anymore, actually. Like, I don't need to start an API. However, I do need this. So I can take this Wiremark server. Let me define it as a, at a higher level here. Private uh, uh, wire uh, uh, read-only Wiremark server. And this is my server here. Mm -hmm. And then this server, yep. we will start it. So this dot server start. Oh, this is getting good. Any, I think we might be doing it. <laughs> We're doing it again, my brother. This is what's happening. <laughs> I'm gonna take. <laughs> I'm gonna take all of this. I'm gonna set this up. So this goes like this. All right, all right. I can set up whatever endpoint I want. So I'm just gonna yeah. go here and say, let me set up the endpoint, and then yeah. let me take yeah. that publisher function and let me call it. Right. So I can go here and say, uh, I'll, I'll even simplify it for now. I'll just say it's just a funk that returns nothing. It would be an action, right? Because it's not going to let you. Yeah. The okay. action. This value task here. Uh, this, this here is the publisher function with whatever that response is, basically. Whatever I'm posting in of T, that would be whatever that is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so okay so that'll stand up whatever endpoint i want so that means if i go back here and kind of revert this and take away the api uh, actually it wasn't the endpoint that i wanted i want this endpoint you're, you're still you're still with me right yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking about the the response type. Don't bail on me. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I was I was going through the code. And I was thinking about that last that last function we wrote, or you wrote that basically. Because uh, I'm like with the, the value task is going to run that uh, the response, and we're sending back. Oh, oh, we don't we don't we don't care about the callback yeah. of the return. Like we're just kind of, yeah. cause the function, the publisher function was actually going to be the thing that we want to yep. test out that's called. Got it, yep. got it, got it, yeah. Yep, yep. Okay, so now I can basically, and I bet you this response message has all the little stuff in here. We, we'll clean it up. Let's just see the concept itself. So this yeah, concept sure. here. So now that means I want to go here and say, I event broker, event broker equals. Don't even have to write code, man. Don't even have to write it. <laughs> Publisher endpoint. And in here, I can basically go and pass in a thing. We'll say console like that with an endpoint that is API slash students. Right? So this here expects a student or something. Yeah, yeah. Wait, did you did you have the generic on the the method, right? You have to tell you what yeah. the type of student is, basically. Make it a string. Okay. Okay. So that means that this is a string. Yeah, yeah. And then you and put that, console right line to yep. the, the string, basically. Yep. And this yeah. guy's expecting a, it's expecting a value task because it says yep. give me a value task, right? So this here will be I don't know return value task. It, so this here, did I say value task from result? I don't think so. Uh, this here is expecting, mm -hmm. yeah, value task. So this would be value task, completed task. There you go. You think it's going to work? 
let's uh put a break point in there let's see when i hit a put a break put on 36 because we want to um it's gonna register that but it won't call it until we do a we're, gonna, we're gonna request that endpoint right we're gonna request that endpoint exactly right? yeah we're gonna yeah, have to call yeah, api yeah. slash students and then it will do the thing right yeah, yeah exactly so let's do that um here's a run well first of all let's say if it destroyed our server <laughs> <laughs> And then if we're that, back to square one again if, we, if it did. Yep, yep. So it's it's at it's it's at, uh, okay. So that's that's the first good thing. First good thing is here. We can see swagger again. Ah, nice, nice, nice. That's number one. Okay, number two. Now we got to call yeah. that endpoint from uh, weather forecast. Yeah, so it's 1985 local host. <laughs> okay, okay. 1985 local host. <laughs> Let's see. So this will be, yeah, 90 day. Okay, here it is, HTTP localhost. And then a post, and then I'm just sending in there a raw, a raw that says Ken. Okay. Ken is awesome. <laughs> and then I'm just posting. There we go. Good? Yep, all good. Okay, no so, okay, localhost, 1985. Oh, system. API, API students, Oh, yes, right? thank you, sir, thank you. Mm, we're missing something. Is there? Oh, okay. Well, let's see. No, that's not it. Local host. What am I missing, Ken? It's probably something really tiny. That's the thing. Is it really uh, uh, spinning up that? It must be. Like uh, external. Well, hmm. So it is using post with endpoint. Hmm. Hmm. API student nineteen eighty five. Let's put it. Want to put a breakpoint in there to see if it's uh in here. Uh, in the callback. Well, yeah, we can do that. If it's let's see, and then this server. No nope. publishing endpoint, so it can it's, it's not data. found. So that that's probably a good thing because that basically means that our problem is just a URL that's not found. You know what I mean? Like it's not, it's not a. How do I say this? It's it's not a it's not a big problem. Oh, wait, can you go? Can you scroll up really quick though? Um, so there's the port right of nineteen eighty five. And then, okay, sorry. So scroll, scroll back down. It's like, what, what is? I'm, I'm wondering. We pass the endpoint in. Mm -hmm. It's gonna append to that local host, right? Mm -hmm. So in our, um, can you go back to the startup again? The program. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm backtracking here. Uh, -huh. uh, API students. I mean, I shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah, API yeah. slash students, it's it's usually just one thing that we usually miss because I'm using this in the acceptance test. Mm -hmm. So I think it is, let's see here. Oh, do I need the slash? I need the slash, I think. That's why. Oh, really? Okay. Now, I was, I, was, I was wondering about the URL configuration. I was trying to figure out if that, yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe. I don't know. This is, let's see here. Yep. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Does it say Swan in here. All done. Does it say Ken in here? So there's the string. Ken is awesome right here. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. Oh man. Oh, unable to cast. Yeah, because it's a response. Because it's <laughs> right, a response, right, right. which is okay. Because what I would want to do here is that I would want to go and say response dot body. I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, they have a body as JSON too. Did you see that? Oh, wait, does it have that? Hold on. Yeah, what? Are you serious? Body, body as JSON. You're not oh, kidding. Man. I like this Stefan guy, man. This is a yeah, this guy. I'm gonna give him a, a sponsorship just literally right now. Yeah, I'm gonna go star the repo or something. <laughs> so, 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 what is this? It cannot convert type string to T. Why is that? Because because why because it's a primitive I, I mean well let's let's see if 
like let's just create a, a model real quick let's just create a dummy like um dummy model of like hey student uh yeah name <laughs> there you go then you have the minimal work required right there you just, you just have to say the words and it knows <laughs> it knows <laughs> yeah. kid it knows <laughs> voice recognition uh yeah. and then uh, i guess what we can do here we can basically go and say json convert uh, serialize with t for whatever that body is so that's response dot oh you mean deser deserialize so i mean with the oh, deserialize. really if we're getting in let's see yes. t yep that's it right okay. here gotcha. right yeah. So, so, so that means on program CS, we can't say, we need to say student here. Yep. Right. And then whatever that student is, you're going to say, give me the name of them. Yep. I think we fixed it, man. I think we figured it out. I'm telling you, you you know, just I just hang out with you and you throw words like this, and my brain is like, <laughs> yep, that's the one, that's the one. So okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go back into Postman. You won't be able to see this, but here is name, and I'm gonna say Ken Swan, and here is a post. Ah, name Ken Swan yeah. students. So it was just a little slash that we yeah. needed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but then let's see. So uh, its name, I, I think I'm missing tiny, tiny detail here. Let's see. Uh, this is response, convert back, body. Oh, I, I didn't have a breakpoint in here. No, it's saying 200, okay, but it's not hitting this guy. Why is that? Oh, the break, yeah, the breakpoint didn't load symbols up there for some reason. It would be here probably. Yeah. Did I oh did I update the code? Oh, there you go. So does it have Ken? Yes, it does. And then it's saying completed task. So it's basically yeah, it worked. It worked, my friend. We nice. spun up a server inside of a server. Nice. Now we can go and expose Lake U as a basically a a an endpoint. And uh let's see that basically solves the problem my friend mm -hmm. okay okay so what should we do now like good citizens i'm gonna go here <laughs> i'm gonna go over here i'm gonna go here because he actually sent me a message he said hey by the way because i had this conversation with him a long time ago yeah and uh i couldn't actually sponsor him because he was, um, he's in a, he's a European country and you couldn't actually wire mock.net. There he is. So you uh, see that little guy here, that guy in here, that's the guy. Nice, nice. So let's see if we can sponsor him. So let's go here. Here's 50 bucks a month. Select. Yes. Per yeah. So that's for the rest of the month. And then there you go. I can sponsor him now. Yeah, there you go. Nice. Done. Yeah, he deserves to be spawned. He's a good guy. So, okay, so let's go back to this. Dude, we figured it out. You know, we have a we have a system that can stand up a server within a server. So that basically means that we can basically Excuse me. Thank you so much. So let's go here. Don't have kids. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's that time of year in the yeah. school season. So, so this is it. This is it right here. We have a server. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ken, I think we got it. So now we can actually have Levent expose that endpoint and it say register whatever function you want. And when, when the acceptance test hit that endpoint, it will pretend that a message has come through the queue. Mm -hmm. Oh my lordy, lordy, lord! Nice, Did man. I tell you that you're awesome? You're awesome, <laughs> man. But but one thing though, we need to make sure that um, like I would put this in a uh, CI/CD type of environment um, and test that out because there was something weird when I was spinning up uh, Web Application Factory one time where 
um, I forget what custom stuff I was doing, but I had to actually put the uh, domain as zero dot or the uh, IP as zero dot zero dot zero dot zero instead of it being localhost. So like during runtime of the CICD pipeline, I had a configuration that swapped it out for whatever reason. I can't remember, but um, the internal environment didn't like it when I leveraged localhost. But however, this might not really be in the same scenario as that but i think just having that level of testing to kind of see like for end to end proving it out to see if there's any weird sort of you know you need to change the you know ip or something to react a different way but that is something i ran into with web application factory and that's a little that's built a little different so you want to do this with me next session let's do it man okay what do you think you're all day every day <laughs> <laughs> See, I know, I know, we're doing some crazy hacking stuff, but that's how you kind of push something useful for the world. And I think that, uh, I think, I think we're just, we're literally just we're standing on top of the shoulders of the giants. Like someone went out there and solved that specific problem. Yeah, yeah. you know, he probably I'm didn't glad. think in his wildest dreams that someone is going to use this as a, a different way of testing mechanism, we, because we're doing it for testing. Like we're yeah. literally yeah. mocking absolutely man yeah that was that was that was nice that, that that guy he uh he definitely came in the clutch on that one i'm gonna go uh, follow this repo you know? yeah he's yeah stuff is good it's awesome Steph is good all right my friend well i hope you you know you had fun hanging out with me today and uh for the people always a pleasure this. yeah <laughs> always, a pleasure. always i mean hey and i'm gonna go all while well, I'm writing code today, man, it's gonna be alt period, alt period. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm gonna see what happens, man. <laughs> it's <like> a new toy, <laughs> my oh, man. man. And of course, you know, people watching, you know, go sponsor Steph, he's a really nice guy. I'm gonna drop his um uh, repo URL in, in the video. And uh, you know, for the people watching us, of course, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or compliments from Mr. Ken Swan here, you know, Mr. Kenneth. You know, uh, don't forget, we call him Kenny and nobody knows, like, who's Kenny, you know, but, but we like him too much. He's a very nice guy. Um, you know, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later. Thank you, Ken. Take care. Thanks.